Oh, sorry. Oh, fuck me, that's loud. <laughs> Jesus. There we go. Okay, that's a bit better. <laughs> Blew my eardrums off then. Good grief. Uh, right, how are we doing? We doing, a, we doing all we doing all right? We doing all okay? We doing all, all good like? Hmm? He's very well. Uh, sweet. I appear to be enrolled onto the Twitch beta program. Uh, and, and now I can't get away from it. I hate stuff like this. Uh... I don't, I don't want to be on the Twitch beta program, but every time I delete the Geo in the Twitch bar at the top, it just it comes back stronger. It comes back stronger. It's all that. Jesus, there's already 94 people here. Like, good God. Yeah, some more experience. That's it. I've got some water ready this time. It's, um... Seven Trent's. Seven Trent's finest tap water. Right, we're, um... We seek re refuge from Messi's stream. She has Barbie girl on repeat. Jesus. I think you need to set it in preferences or something like that. I haven't a damn clue. Haven't a damn clue. Get the Twitch desktop app. How's about no? <laughs> they have a desktop app? Okay. Um, sweet. Right. I, I, do, I have warm waters at the moment. I also want to share a picture with you that I found. Um... From the, uh, from the uh, Call of Duty, uh, <laughs> the, the whole. Do you know how everybody like is just dressed in like basically any camouflage uh, that they want to? Like you got like black Nazis, Nazis wearing American helmets and stuff like that. Someone made that, which really made me laugh. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It just it just tickled me so it did. <laughs> And for some reason, I can't unsee it, but this guy here, um, I'm, I'm certain that's Barack Obama. I'm certain that's Barack Obama, but yeah. You know, you, it just, it's just got his eyes. It's got his eyes, I don't know. Anyway, that's not why we're here. We're here to play some... Uh, <laughs> we're here to play some cold waters today, which should be a... Should be a laugh. So yeah, it's um, fucking sweet, I guess. Right. So I just gotta find stuff. Right, uh, cold waters. Um, I actually really enjoyed our skipjack playthrough yesterday, so we're gonna be doing more of that. Is there? I'm still on the beaters branch for cold waters, and that's where I think I'm gonna stay. So let's load up the game and just transition you over, I think, if I hit the old play button. I was going to play some armor today, but it, I don't know. I'm kind of in between armor games. Like, I'm not sure whether I want a Zeus. I, I'm, I really want to play a, an armor mod called Anti-Stasi. And some people might have heard of that already. It's like a guerrilla warfare campaign. And it looks it looks amazing. It looks absolutely awesome. And I was thinking of playing that, but it's, you need an absolute beast of a server to run it. And I don't have a beast of a server. Still waiting on that City Skylines mod, exactly. Right then. Ooh. I need to drink more water, so I'm making a point of that. Okay, so, um, I already oh, know which... Oh, yeah. But chew it, thanks very much, mate. Twitch Prime sub, month number two. Cheers, man. Yeah, we got those uh, Twitch uh, oh, subscriber things in the pipeline. Should be pretty good. You got different coloured bears and things like that. It's going to be quite sweet. So, yeah. Um, let's have a look. So we've got the campaign here. We're going to play a 1984 campaign, but we're going to play it in in the little skipjack that could. And we're not going to spend ages beating around the bush. You know exactly which one we're going for. Here he is. The USA Class SSN Skipjack Era 1984. It only comes a fit equipped with Mark 48 torpedoes and MOSSs. Interestingly, it says that there's an option for defensive weapons, which maybe that's going to be a thing in the future. I don't know. But it's a three and a half thousand ton submarine, 77 meters, topping nine meters tall. Is it nine meters tall? I think that's topping nine meters tall. Um, it has a speed of 30 knots, crew of 93, and a test depth of 700 feet. Now, there was some confusion last time between uh, test depth and crush depth. And uh, the difference between the two is that test depth is the depth in which the hull has been tested to. So, the uh, people who made the submarine say that the submarine can go to 700 feet without crushing. That is the safe depth. Once you go beyond the 700 foot threshold, 
there is a chance that you could crush. That there isn't like a solid chance, obviously the deeper you go past 700, but at 700 feet, the hull was holding, basically. So that's, if, once you cross that point, that is the point in which you could possibly crush like an egg. So uh, that's one thing we, uh, one thing that a few people got confused last time. Another thing is, uh, the sensors on this, this is a 1959 submarine, been in service since 1959. So what that means is is that this submarine has some very, very dated sonar equipment. Um, it's got the BPS-12 search radar, ESM and mass mount, which are the little yokies that poke out of the top here. They're not too bad, to be fair. The problem comes with the ANBQS and BQR series, or just, uh, just the BQR series of sonars. They're all medium frequency. Now the problem is with medium frequency sonars is that they've really struggled to detect things on the the, the higher end of the band or the lower end of the band. Sorry, um, the it's it's a tricky thing. It's a tricky thing. Um, if it's a really low frequency vessel or it makes a very low amount of noise, um, this series of sonar equipment does not scan the lower band very well, and such it has been branded medium frequency equipment as it best spots things at the medium frequency which is a, a little bit, you know, interesting, to say the least. Um, so if it's if there's plenty going on in the middle part of the band, then we chances are we'll be able to identify people quite easily. But most of the time things tend to happen at the lower end of the band, and we're going to struggle, especially when it's in a really noisy ambient environment, we're going to really struggle to identify things. So that's going to be a quite interesting. Again, I'll just read you the little snippet from the bottom there, I'm sure you've read it already, but in service from 1959, the Skipjacks were first the first attack submarines to feature the revolutionary uh, teardrop hull, so the first submarines to look like that. Uh, prior to this, they all looked like, you know, like this, really, like guppies and stuff like that. This is a Romeo, a DPRK version, um, but, you know, this, this was the first submarine of its sort of class to feature, oh, that's the 68, there we go, uh, this kind of teardrop hull, which does a very good job of dispersing sonar signatures, so for 1959 it was quite a modern attack submarine. Um, and single hull construction within a single shaft, so single hull, rather than having, you know, loads of like different, yeah, rather than being as assembled in sections, it was assembled in one complete unit with just a single shaft. Um, it has been refitted with quieter propellers and towed arrays, these boats were designed for high speed, and lacking silencing and advanced sensors, and lacking the silencing and advanced sonars, sorry, uh, in the later classes. One member of this class, the USS Scorpion, sank with all hands near Az Azores? Azores in 1968. So, this is a, a very interesting uh, submarine. So, um, to a degree, it's a very old submarine that's had some very minor adjustments to make it really compatible with modern era. Uh, attack submarines. This is neither an SSBN or an SSGN. It is simply an SSN or an yep. It's simply an SSN, which means it is neither a ballistic nor nuclear um, or ca carrying a nuclear arsenal. So it doesn't carry ballistic missiles. It doesn't carry anything like that. It is simply a nuclear powered a nuclear two powered plus attack two submarine. Two is four minus oh. one. That's three. Quick maths. Oh, the sound didn't go off. Oh, sorry. Hang on. I totally missed that. Let's put the old Stanley Parable stuff back on, otherwise I'm going to miss them. That was something that we needed to do. Uh, sorry about that. Thanks very much, though. <laughs> I was like, why is Edith talking? He's like, Edith, back in the cage. Go on, back in the box, Edith. He's been cheated. The old quick math, the old fire in the booth. That's it. Donations and sound volume. Let's bring it up to, like, 40%. There we go. Sorry there, the old Stanley Parable stuff should be back now. Sweet. I'm thinking of actually scrapping the Stanley Parable music. I know it's the it would be the end of a bygone era, but it's uh, something that I think is a bit long, perhaps. It just needs... Like, in, the, in the same way the subscriber notifications is quite short, it's... Uh, it's yeah. Trying to keep with that theme. Right. So, let us uh, rock and or roll. So... We're back in the USS Shark. It didn't sink. It didn't sink. It's still here. Um, effective immediately, you are here by assigned command of Skipjack Class Submarine USS Shark SSN 591. Congratulations and good luck in your new command. 
We've got all the obligatory newspaper cuttings. Um, I imagine most of us here know the premise for this game. And uh, to sort of summarize it, Reagan gets into power and is very harsh to the Soviet Union during his time in office. Um, a series of escalating Cold War stuff results in the Cold War eventually turning hot and um, Soviet tanks flooding across into uh, Eastern Europe. So, would they deploy us, the little skipjack that could, the USS Shark, to uh, basically do as much damage as we possibly can? The entire sort of Western world here in Europe uh, hinges on our little submarine, so we got to get ready for it. I can't, can't wait for World War III, I, I fucking can. Right, the tactical situation is that the intelligence that we have estimates... There we go, here's the broken English that we know. Um, intelligence estimates indicate... Or, Estimate. It's not even broken English, it's just me. Intelligence estimates indicate that. <laughs> it's just me! It's just me. That enemy Spetsnaz commandos will land from submarine in the vicinity of Reykjavik and uh, Keflavik in Iceland. They intend to report our sub movements and perhaps sabotage a naval base. You are ordered to intercept and eliminate them before they land. Primary objective is to locate and sink the enemy submarines transporting the Spetsnaz commandos, and the secondary objective is to locate and locate and sink any escorting submarines if possible. That's right. Now we're just going to take our default loadout. What we are going to do is reload our two MOSS decoys. In fact, actually, I'm going to unload two more and take two of these with me. So I've got two backups. That's cast off, so we've got to get up to Reykjavik up here. It's difficult to say which way they'll go. I reckon, I reckon they'd go through the Denmark Strait. A betting man would say they'd go through the Denmark Strait, but who knows. So those MOSSs, I'm sure, as many of you know, those are the decoys that are going to save our ass, because this is quite a loud submarine. I think it pulls about 130 decibels, 135 decibels. So we're just going to lie in wait. We're going to lie in wait here. So that we have time to intercept whether he goes north or south of Iceland. I'm not sure whether this fucker coming into the Norwegian Sea is our uh, is our guy or not. Difficult to say. Enemy patrol submarines in the Norwegian Sea. There he goes, he's making a break for it. I found you, you motherfucker. Right. It's quite a fast submarine for what it's worth, so... Um, comrade Captain, again, I don't. it says that because we've got the Russian mod installed. We have a new sonar contact bearing 1, designated as Sierra 1. XO reports that our depth is 600 feet, heading is 9, our speed is 20 knots. Local conditions are gentle, or gentle breeze, overcast, no, surf no surface layer and no thermal duct. All hands to battle stations. Rig ship for ultra silent running. Rig ship for ultra quiet. And begin our TMA leg. Take a sounding. The ambient noise is 84 decibels, so it's not super quiet, but it's not super loud either. So if they're running quiet submarines, we may struggle to find them. Speed is currently 10 knots. We know they're somewhere in front of us, but not how far or, or anything else. Con sonar, new contact bearing. Three, five, nine. Designated Sierra, one. Three, five, nine. Direct me to our front. Six percent, twenty percent sonar solution. So as we slow down here to five knots, we can begin identifying the target. So we know it's a submarine, and looks like we've got some sort of narrow to high band shining through here. So let's let's scan. See, we can't get that to match anything. Looks like it's a whiskey class. Con sonar, Sierra 1, is classified as submerged submarine. So that's a whiskey class submarine there. So we're just going to continue on our current course. So whiskey class, let's take a look at what we've got. He's got medium frequency equipment like us, snoop plate and set 65 torpedoes. Those are his anti-submarine torpedoes right there, nasty business. He's got a test depth of 655 feet, crew of 54. It's a very small submarine for what it's worth, not very well equipped. It's a World War II submarine, this one, you can tell by the design of it. And that means we really don't have much to fear. Again, the only reason they're still in service is really to run special operation missions mostly. These aren't really used by the uh, modern Soviet attack fleet. 
um, of submarines. These are really designed for sort of special ops, sort of old rust buckets. They are the you know the old they are the Land Rover of the uh, of the submarine world. They're pretty reliable, pretty rugged, and uh, the whiskey will get there and do the job. But it's quite loud. It's not a very it's quite a blunt weapon. Okay, so we now know that he's moving to our left. Target solution is 63%. Range is 13,700 yards. He is pulling 8 knots. We're going to continue on our current course because we can drift into the target's baffles. We're getting quite close to being detected by his medium frequency passive sonar. But there's not much danger of it yet. The further we drift into his baffles, the better it will be for us. Now, for anybody wondering what baffles are, if that's a new phrase for you, um, he basically... But sonar basically works through um, passive sonar. Basically works through listening, and um, you can you basically listen for like a frequency uh, on the water. Essentially, that's how we've detected him here using our um, passive sonar. But behind us, there is our own propeller and our own engines, which create a lot of noise, which sadly totally blocks out everything in an angle behind us. That is known as being in the contacts baffles. If I am back here, I would not be able to detect a submarine. So if there was a submarine behind me, I wouldn't know because there is a blind spot. Now this whiskey is moving away from us, to the left, to the west, and uh, there is a good opportunity while we're doing so that as long as we remain undetected we can drift into its baffles. Now we'll know we've been detected if we switches to active sonar go. Range is 13,000 yards. We've now got a solid target solution. Beg your pardon. Range is only 5,000 yards. 6,400 yards. We should be able to see him if we go into first person. There he is. He's up there. He's currently sitting at about 200 feet. Dive. Bring us down to 650 feet. Make depth 650 feet, dive by. Just get a little bit more water between me and him. Oh, yeah. So, I was from Death Hunter two months already, I know. Thanks very much, mate. Willkommen. Let's take a look at the bastard. We can see him now because we've got his target solution. So a very, very sort of rusty old submarine. He's making a course adjustment, but he's not speeding up. It's obviously reached some sort of waypoint. Con, dive at six five zero feet. Dive by. This is good because he's now turning away from us, which means he is just making it easier for us to get into his baffles. Still making a north turn here. This is excellent. We're not quite in his baffles yet, but we're getting there. He holding steady on that course. Now he's still making the turn. He's still turning. This is good. This is good. We're going to be in his baffles soon. Like I say, he's pulling about eight knots. We can't speed up, though. Okay, so he's gone to there. We are going to make a course head, a course adjustment. We're going to turn bearing zero two two. Come right to zero two two. Helm I. We need to try and get into his baffles as best we can. So we're going to close the distance between us and this sixty degree blind spot. Now he's very close to us. He's only six thousand yards. Helm. Steady course. Six thousand yards is like nothing for a torpedo to close on. So he's very close to us. The fact that we're remaining undetected is just short of a miracle. We're only at minus four here, minus five. If this number here dips to 
anywhere between 0 and 1, or even minus 1 in some cases, then that means he's likely got a detection on us. And if he switches to active high frequency search, he won't be able to find us at all. So it's medium frequency passive. We'll be doing most of the legwork here. Back to the tactical map. blind spot there. Come left to three, four, eight, helm I. Make another course adjustment. Okay. I would say we are comfortably within the 60 degree blind spot of that vessel. Now he's actually opening distance now. Con, oh. helm, steady course. Although very slowly, he is now opening distance. He's still very close to us, might I say, but... Again, it's all about firing from cover. My worry is here, friends, is that there is another submarine that I have not detected. Maybe an escort submarine, a very quiet one. And the second I reveal myself to this whiskey, because this is a very old and loud submarine, the second I reveal myself to him, I break my stealth. Oh, dead space when? Never. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much for the six pounds there. Uh, I'm getting Edith to read it out for you. Dead space when? Dead space when? I don't know. I really. Con sonar, Sierra 1 is cavitating. Sierra 1 is cavitating. He's coming shallow. Interesting. He just made a lot of noise then. For no good reason. We're actually going to fire, I think, before he gets too far away, and this should draw out anybody else that's nearby. So, firing point procedures, ready to one. Uh, okay. So, fire on bearing. Three, two, four. Range to enable 6,100 yards. Ship ready, tube ready, fire tube one. Ship tube one, aye sir. Weapon clear of the tube and running normally. Right. Helm, make adjustment for torpedo bearing three, two, four. Come left to three, two, four. Helm, I. Right. Are the torpedoes away. Mark 48, add cap torpedo. Moving very, oh, this isn't even, sorry, this isn't an add cap. This is just a Mark 48. The add cap's different design. So Mark 48 torpedo. Now screaming Con, helm, steady course. at about 45 knots towards the target. Uh, probably closer to 50, perhaps. And 40, for, yeah, so 45, 48 knots, that kind of bracket. Yes, Mabuk, the calculations are done for you. These are modern attack submarines, so I have to just input the firing point procedures. They've also got homing warheads, which means they uh, they actively steer towards the target. They're uh, sound-seeking missiles, if you like. Or if you imagine a heat-seeking missile, this is a sound-seeking torpedo. It seeks out a sonar contact. Currently on course for the whiskey. Range to enable is 3,000 yards. Time to run is 15 minutes. Time to run being the fuel remaining. Active ping to scare them before they die. We could do, but I want to keep it passive for the moment. I don't want to, I don't want to give them any indication where this torpedo came from. I want it to be a total mystery for them, just in case there is some kind of support craft. He's stepped up to 11 knots, but he's not made any course adjustments, which is interesting. He's running shallow and he's cavitating. I'm not sure whether he's detected the launch or not. He hasn't gone evasive and he's not changed his course. So I can only think that he's just trying to make good time at the moment. We should be able to see our torpedo, actually, if we, uh, if we look very close. Come on. 
Headphone thing. It's Hangul. Get out of there, you bastard. There we go. Where is he? So it's running a bit deeper than he is. There it is. The torpedo is actually about to reach its enable point, which means it will start tracking the target. So the weapon is now homing the target. It's a passive warhead or a passive sensor, which means it's not making any noise, it's just listening. And because he's cavitating like a motherfucker, it has got an absolute bead on him. Like this thing is going to find him no trouble. What are you doing in a 1950s sub? So, <laughs> yeah, it's true. Con sonar, noisemaker, bearing, three, one, nine. So he's just detected it. He's now trying to go evasive. He's stepped it up to 13 knots, so he now knows we're here. Con, fire control, weapon acquired. Weapon acquired. There we go, he's coming back in. There we go, activate the active homing warhead. Sierra, one. Last bearing, three, two, zero. Contact breaking up. Contact breaking up. No vessels nearby. Leave combat. One times whiskey engaged and sunk with a single Mark 48 torpedo. Excellent. That was, uh, that was pretty simple as things go. Brilliant. Excellent performance on locating and eliminating enemy submarines transporting Spetsnaz commandos. New orders to be transmitted on this downlink. Lovely. All right, we get a newspaper clipping as well. World news. Red sub sunk. The Pentagon today revealed that several Soviet submarines attempting an incursion near Reykjavik and Keflavik, Iceland, have been destroyed or driven off by coordinated efforts by NATO surface vessels, submarines and aircraft. The continued cooperation of NATO members was cited as pivotal to the successful outcome of the operation. Uh, ongoing protection of the many NATO allied military installations throughout the theater remains a high priority. NATO's ability to maintain control of the region is founded on these bases. Excellent. So, uh, another mission comes down the line. Another top secret um, plan, if you like. Intelligence data indicates that the, that the enemy plans an amphibious landing at Narvik, Norway. This is where this submarine is going to struggle. Um, a task force with these with landing ships is leaving Murmansk now. You must intercept, intercept and destroy this force before the landing occurs. NavOps is depending on you. No other ship or aircraft are in position to intercept in time. The primary objective is to sink the amphibious landing ships. The other objective, the secondary objective, is to locate and sink escorting vessels. So let's continue. So we've got to get to Narvik. Which is going to be down here. So we're screaming across the Norwegian Sea at the moment. Did you see my message about dangerous waters? Yes, it looks a little bit dated though, friend. <laughs> I, I think it would be it might be a cool game to play. Oh, stand by. <laughs> a whale. Comrade Captain, we have a new sonar contact bearing 154, designated as Sierra 1. Our depth is 600 feet, heading is 177. Speed is 20 knots. Local conditions are clear. Light breeze, no surface duct, no thermal layer. Time is two zero 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 hours, which means it's in the evening. All hands to battle Bring stations. Ship for ultra quiet. Drop down to a head one third ultra quiet running. Ready tubes three. So I don't know what we've bumped into here. It's interesting. No contact. Take a sounding. Ambient noise is not too quiet, not too loud. Chances are here we bumped into a submarine. But which one? Mudrunner. Con, sonar, new contact bearing. One, five, four. Designated Sierra, one. Oh yeah, I've got to play some Mudrunner with Merrick as well. Okay, so... Con, sonar, new contact bearing. One, 
nine zero designated Sierra two. So we've got two submarines. Oh, well, we've got two contacts. Both of them have the same signature. So let's have a look. It looks to... I would guess these are submarines. So let's try an ID. We can ID... Oh. Con sonar. Launch transient from Sierra 1. Here we go. Right. Snapshot on the bearing of Sierra 1. Shoot 2-4. Shoot 2 Aye, four. Sir. We've been detected. Con sonar. Sierra 1 is cavitating. Sierra 1 is cavitating. Con sonar. Sierra 1 is cavitating. Sierra 1 is cavitating, aye. I'm not speeding up yet. So we know that the other one is a kilo as well. Con sonar. Sierra 2 is classified as submerged submarine. They're closing in. They're only at 8,000 yards. They're very close. Right, we're going to enable the weapon. And we're going to steer it onto target. So this weapon is now running. We're going to set it to active search. The kilo is trying to leg it. Right, take us, take us up, dive. Bring us up to 200 feet. Make depth to zero, zero feet, dive by. Helm adjust course. Bring us right to one, one, one. Come left to or left one, sorry. one, one. Helm I. They're trying to get away. Con, fire control, weapon acquired. Weapon acquired, he's coming shallow. Uh, the weapon's searching shallow as well. Belay that dive, bring us down 750 feet. Make depth 750 feet, dive by. Bring us left, bring us, sorry, hard right. Come two, right four, to two, two, four, eight. Eight. two, four, eight. Two, four, eight. Bring us to a head two thirds. Make turns for one, zero knots, maneuvering eye. Bring us a head standard. Make turns for one, five knots, maneuvering eye. Gone fire control, we've lost the wire. Lost the wire, eye. Con, helm, steady course. Incoming. Right, turn us in on the weapon. Come left to one, four, five, helm, I. Bring us to a head full. Con, sonar, torpedo in the water, torpedo in the water, bearing, one, four, two. Torpedo in the water. Bring us to a head flank. Dive, take us down to Con, 800 help. feet. Make depth 800 zero, zero feet. Dive by. Right, taking manual control of the boat. Flick it right. 30 degrees right rudder. Bring us full dive on the planes. Con, so Stop again, 800 feet. There we go. Turn us in on the weapon. Raise, raise, raise. We're below crush depth. Passing 900 feet. 30 degrees left rudder. Con, knuckle formed. Passing 800 feet. Passing 700 feet. Con, fire control, weapon countermeasure homing. Right, bring us down to a head standard. Make turns for one, five knots, maneuvering eye. Get ready to discharge MOSS 2 from tube 6. Ship ready, tube ready, fire snapshot of tube 6. Shoot tube 6. Aye, sir. Bring us full, yeah, full down on the planes, please. Making turns for 30 degrees one. Passing right 700 feet. Con sonar. Passing 800 feet. Bring us to a head flank. Make turns for three zero knots. Maneuvering eye. Helm come right come to bearing right two, two nine eight. Two nine eight. Helm I. Dive, make depth 700 feet. Make depth 700 zero, zero feet, dive by. Reload tube 6 with MOSS, reload tubes 1 and 3 with Mark 48. So, they're now chasing the decoy. Con sonar, noisemaker bearing 1, 3, 1.
go into a circular search. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Snake back, snake back. Ah, the weapon's on us again. Right, flick the tail, create a knuckle, try and confuse it. Con, knuckle formed. Knuckle formed. Go on, go into a circular search, you bastard. Go on, chase that weapon off further. Go on, you fucker. No, Con, maneuvering, making turns for three, zero, not. Flick, flick it out again, flick again. Give me another knuckle. Con, sonar. Con, knuckle formed. Knuckle formed. Go on, go into a circular search, you twat. Knows where we're going. Right, turn back in. I'm gonna try and dump this guy. We're just gonna have to fucking bum rush him. Here we go. Con, knuckle formed. Okay. Give me 30 degrees rise on the plane. Passing 700 feet. We're gonna go above him. Passing 600 feet. Weapon acquired. Passing 500. Con sonar. We are cavitating. We are cavitating, aye. Passing 400 feet. That's a test or a use set, sorry. Turn us in. Give me 30 degrees Passing drop on 300 the planet. feet. Flood ballast. Passing 300 feet. 30 degrees left rudder. Con knuckle on the formed. Planet. Passing 500 feet. sonar, no Fighter. longer cavitating. Reloading them. MOSS up here, don't want to do that. Con sonar, up. regained contact on. Sierra, one, bearing, one, three, four. Sierra, one. Still chasing the target. We picked up the warhead again. Passing 600 feet. We're bringing, we're basically towing this torpedo back to their fleet in an attempt to try and lose it. If I can drag this torpedo over to them, maybe we can get away from it. Flick the tail, give us a knuckle. Con, knuckle formed. Knuckle formed, aye. Let's keep our speed up. Helm, adjust course. Come left to one, two, nine. Helm, aye. Helm, aye. That weapon's very close. I don't know how long we're going to have to evade this for. Con, torpedo room, tube four ready. Give us a flick of the, the tail. Con, knuckle formed. Knuckle formed. Let's confuse it. And basically I'm creating turbulence with my uh, rudder, and that is trying to confuse the torpedo. We're pulling as fast as we can go, 30 knots, right. Drop on the planes, we're gonna have to go underneath this one. 30 Passing degrees left. 700 over. feet. Con, sonar, torpedo in the water, torpedo in the water. Bearing, one, two, nine. 30 degrees right, rudder. Con, sonar, lost contact. Sierra, one, last bearing, one, four, two. Contact is in the baffles. Contact is in the baffles. Con, sonar, regained contact on. Sierra, one. Bearing one, ball. passing 800 feet. Our uh, Mark 48's coming back at us. Damn. That's going to be a lot harder to lose. Right. Con, torpedo room, tube six ready. I can't fire off yet. This is about Con, knuckle formed. Dive us out. Con, sonar, lost contact. Sierra, one. Come right to two, seven, zero. Helm, I. Right, Con, just focus helm, on steady course. We're going to disengage, we're not going to fight this. Shit, my Mark 48 got tangled up. Very good evasion from the other captain then. He's managed to he's managed to use my own tactic against me. I wanted to bring his torpedo over to him and God, sling it back at him. But in, in, what's happened is my Mark 48's come back at me and my Mark 48 has got a much better warhead, or a much better sonar head. Con sonar regained contact on Sierra one bearing one four three. Yeah, they're trying to get out of here. Right, give me thirty degrees rise on the planes. Passing eight hundred feet. Bring us up. 
Passing 700 feet. Passing 600 feet. Right now, 30 degrees drop on the we are cavitating. And give me full dive. Passing 400 feet. Passing 400 feet. Passing 5. Con sonar, no longer cavitating. Sink us out. Reacquired. Turn us in. Passing 600 feet. Passing Ooh. 700 feet. Bring us back up. I've got to just keep going till these torpedoes run out of fuel. Con sonar, launch transient from Sierra One. That's bad. Sending another torpedo my way. Is the torpedo going back towards them? sucked up on my decoy. This is a passive homing warhead. We're just going to keep our speed up for now. He's now snaking off in this direction. Right, bring us down to a head one Make ship for ultra, quiet. ultra silent running. Dive, dive, bring us down to 700 feet. Make depth Helm, seven, just zero, to... Zero feet, dive, aye. Helm, bring us left to 127. Come left to 127. Helm, aye. Ah, uh, we've not disengaged yet. That torpedo's found us again. This is our Mark 48. Let's see if we can't find them. All back emergency. Back emergency. Maneuver guy. Try and slow us down. Bring us to a head one Make third. turns for five knots. Maneuvering eye. No sonar contacts. Too distant. Cons. Oh. Contact Make turns for five Fire knots. Fire snapshots on the bearing eye. of Sierra 2. Ship ready, tube ready. Fire tubes four. Shoot tube four. Aye, sir. Right, bring us to a head. Make Flank. turns for three zero knots. Maneuvering eye. Drop the decoy. Gone fire control. We've lost the wire. <laughs> shit. Oh shit. They've surfaced. Yeah, that was fucking close, you are right. This is our torpedo, this is the Mark 48. This is a serious piece of kit that's chasing us right now. Reload tube two, or four, sorry. <laughs> you can't handle this, it's tense, isn't it? Weapon snaking back that way. Bring us Come left. left to two, three, one, helm, I. Two, three, one. Con, helm, steady course. Helm I, or con I. Weapon reacquired. It's chasing us. It's sucked up on the decoy. 30 degrees left rudder. This is the Tokyo Drift submarine, I like it. It's got such big rudder paddles for the type of ship that it is. It's excellent. Absolutely excellent. Con, maneuvering, making turns for three. Zero knots. Still pinging us right over there. There was another launch transient, if you remember. The trick is, is that it there? Con, torpedo room, tube four ready. Weapon, is it tracking? Why is it going shallow? I don't remember setting it to shallow. It is, it's tracking a target. Looks like there's a target over here. Sierra 2. Looks like it's taking on water. Right, 30 degrees right rudder. Drop the planes, flood ballast. Passing 800 feet. Full Passing rise on the planes, feet. flood. Oh, yep, open ballast tanks. Bring us back up. Passing 900 feet. 900 feet. Bring us up. Take us away from crushed. Passing 800 feet. 
Passing 700 feet. Passing 600 feet. Level us off. Passing 5. Con sonar. We are cavitating. Cavitating, aye. Passing 400 feet. Weapon searching shallow. Off our bow. Looks like one of the vessels has surfaced. Passing 300 feet. We are now too shallow. Con sonar. Noisemaker bearing 1, 6, 9. Noisemaker has been deployed. We're now too shallow for this weapon. Con sonar lost contact. Sierra Dive. 2, last bearing 1, feet. 6, 7. Make depth 2, 0, 0 feet. Dive by. Con sonar lost contact. Sierra 1, last bearing 1, 1, 2. Contact breaking up. Sierra 1 is breaking up. Sierra 1 has sunk. Con sonar lost contact. Sierra there two we we last him. bearing one six six. Contact breaking up. We got him. Right, dive. Bring us up to one hundred feet. Make depth one zero zero feet. Dive by. All back, back emergency. emergency. Con sonar no longer cavitating. Bring us to a full stop. Full stop. Make turns for zero knots. Maneuvering eye. If we can hold just here, right above the torpedo's circular search, we can just wait for it to run out of fuel. Bring us up to five zero feet, please, dive. Make depth five zero feet, dive by. There they go. Took on too much water. Where are we? We're like right above this bastard. There we are. So by stopping here, we are above the cone of search. So if you imagine a cone right out the front of the torpedo, um, it basically means that, that that is its search cone, basically. Now that means the closer you are to the torpedo, the narrower the search is for it, and the further you are away, the wider the spectrum. If you literally imagine a pyramid, if you're at the very tip, the actual inside of the pyramid is tiny. But if you're at the very base, the base of the pyramid is very wide, and therefore, in a torpedo sonar sort of Con, term... Dive at five, zero feet, dive by. Excellent. So it exploded right below us, and a load of water rushed past us as well. It created a load of turbulence on the surface, but we did complete our objective, which was to sink both Sierra 2 and Sierra 1. They've both gone past crush depth as well, they've both sank. The ocean here is below 3,000 feet, so they've sank down and they've crushed like an egg, so we did it. Excellent. Leave combat. Two Kilo class submarines, both sunk for the cost of, um, I believe that was three Mark 48 torpedoes, that was really good. Oh god, that was pretty tense actually. These are nasty little bastards, those ones. Let's go below three and a half thousand. Yeah, I don't think I don't think so. Right, excellent results, but unfortunately this was not your mission. Very well, yes, we need to get to Narvik, don't we? We need to repel a landing force here, which is gonna get really interesting really quickly. Because I am not in a submarine equipped for this kind of work. So Narvik is this small port in here. It's a military installation. Here we go. We found our target. We should be holding at periscope depth. If the game doesn't crash, there we go. We have a new sonar contact bearing 94, designated as Sierra 1. Exo reports that our depth is at 50 feet. Heading is 139. Speed is 5 knots. Conditions are rain, light air. We've got a weak surface duct and a very weak thermal layer occupying the bracket at 247 feet below the surface. This is going to be really shallow, you are right. Close to 25,000 yards. Rig ship for ultra quiet. Rig ship for ultra quiet running. Dive, bring us up to 4 5 Make feet. Depth 4 5 feet, dive by. And upscope. Contacts. Contact, in fact, let's do a target. Can't dive at 4 5 feet, dive by. Can't quite service the targets yet, so let's bring us up to 
periscope depth, which we are. Raise the scope. scope. Target bearing is 091. Contact. Warship. Master 1. Contact. Contact minimal. No visual on any of the contacts along the bearing of approach. Stand by. One helicopter in the air. No visual on any other contacts. Nothing else looming through the fog. Drop down scope. Go. Dive, bring us down to 100 feet. Make depth 100 feet, dive by. So, tip of the iceberg. Let's try and identify the other vessels that we're fighting. Master 1 is now fully uh, rendered for us, although our sonar contact is still very weak for it. So let's do our best to ID. So we know it's a warship because we saw the, the shape of it. A Cresta 2. Looks like it's likely a Cresta, so let's mark it. Con Sonar Master 1 is classified as Escort. Escort ship. We've got a whole heaping load of ships. We've got at least seven. Now, I could engage the Cresta. Now, here comes the problem with the skipjack. It only has one wire, which means if I want to maintain control, I need to fire only one torpedo at a time, which is going to be very interesting. So, without further ado, I think we're going to have to get stuck in. They're going active. We should still be hidden from this at 12,000 yards. We're actually going to fire on the Cresta immediately. Dive make depth 200 make feet depth and ready two, to zero, one. Zero feet, dive by. Firing point procedures on Master 1, Cresta 2, anti-submarine warfare ship. It is speeding up. We have, could have been detected. Ship ready, tube ready, fire tube 1 on bearing 118, range to enable 6,400 yards. Ship tube 1, aye sir. Weapon away and running normally. Helm, adjust course to the bearing of the weapon. Bearing 118. Come left to 118. Helm, I. Torpedo away. Cresta is speeding up. It is currently making 21 knots. What have I got left in the stores? We've got 13 Mark 48 in the stores and a single MOSS. This is going to be nasty. Con, helm, steady course. Bring us just below the weak thermal duct, please. Dive, drop us down to 300 feet. Make depth three, zero, zero feet, dive by. Do I know the mighty jingles? Yes, I do. I like the mighty jingles a lot. Well, I used to. Um, I tend not to watch his content that much these days, I don't know, like, because, you, I, I don't know, I, I know, I know Echo really likes him, but I, 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 I used to watch him, uh, not for any rhyme or reason, but um, I just, I don't know, found other content to watch, it's difficult to say, it's not bad content that the Jing Mighty Jingles does, just didn't tickle me fancy, or doesn't tickle my fancy as much these days. Why follow the torpedo? They could snapshot right down the path of launch transients. It's a good point. But a lot of these ships won't be firing torpedoes. Um, they'll be firing um, RBU systems. The RBU, I believe the Crest has got an RBU system aboard. Yes, it does. An RBU 6000 system, which are these rockets here. It does have the ability to fire test 71s, but it won't do that until it's right on top of us. Con, dive at three, zero, zero feet, dive by. Or it's going to fire these SSN 14s, which are the only torpedoes that are really any good. So it should be a little bit interesting. We're going to set the weapon to search shallow as well, as it comes to its enable point. The rest of the ships are going to turn and run after this, so I need to make sure I get on top of them quickly. I can go faster under the water than they can on the surface, which means I need to bum rush them when I get the chance. So once the weapon enables, it's going to set shallow, and I'm going to get ready to rush them, basically. So dive. Make depth 600 feet. Make depth 600 feet. Dive by. 
Weapons turning in, or the crest is turning in. Looks like it's detected the weapon. Let's set Con, the weapon. Fire to control, active. weapon acquired. Weapon is now going up. They've slowed down and they've detected the weapon. Con, sonar, lost contact. Sierra, two, last bearing, zero, six, eight. Contact faded. Cut the wire for the weapon and reloaded a Mark 48 in two, one. Adjust bearing to, to the left, zero, nine, Come six. left two. Zero, nine, six, helm, I. And bring us to a head standard, 15 Make turns knots. Four, one, five knots, maneuvering I. Con, sonar, lost contact. Sierra, three, last bearing. Con, helm, steady course. Con, sonar, lost contact. Sierra, seven, last bearing. Zero, nine, five, contact faded. So they're making a run down this Come way. right to zero, nine, eight. Helm I. Bring us to a head flank. Make turns for We need to try three, and catch up with zero them. Zero knots. Maneuvering I. This Crestor 2 is about to get fresh. In comes the weapon. They're not even trying to evade it. Con sonar lost contact. Master 1. Last bearing 1. Zero, eight. Right on the contact bow, breaking up. Con dive it's already at taking six, on a shitload of zero, water. Eight, die by. I love your voice, mate. It would sound weird, but if you narrated some World War II docs, I would watch those. <laughs> Fair enough, mate. Yeah, that was a big hit. He's taken on a lot of water. Now there's no doubts where we are. Come left to zero nine six helm I. Right. We've got some speed to make up. We're pulling twenty nine knots now. The thing is, with when you're at a surface ship, you have the, the wash and the wake of the waves to deal with that slows you down. Under the water, we have no such turbulence, which means we can go like the clappers down here. And that's what we're going to do. We're currently pulling 30 knots, which is the top speed of this submarine. The tenders and tankers on the surface will probably only be able to pull 25 knots. So as long as we keep going in this direction, we'll be closing. And as long as we close, it should be pretty good. It is amazing. It is amazing. You are right, Kabaya. There he goes. He's on his way to the bottom. He's just gone, and, and all of a sudden, any evidence of a ship being there remains nothing more as a smoking oil stain, a puff of smoke. It's so hard it fucked the texture up. 